When looking to get started using a new REST API endpoint or to understand a particular endpoint better, we recommend to use the API-docs page as a starting point. You can access this page from our demo site at demo.microstrategy.com slash microstrategy library slash API hyphen docs, or from within your own personal environment by appending slash API hyphen docs to the end of your typical microstrategy library URL, as shown here. A quick look at the API docs page and you'll notice a list of families organizing the endpoints into groups. Groups such as authentication, configuration, cubes, et cetera. Let's take a look at how to use this page and the REST API. The entry point into the REST API begins in the authentication family by creating our initial session using an API auth login call. When we expand this, we'll notice that we see a list of information. In the first block, we'll get some information about what this endpoint is and how it works. We'll have some parameters that we'll need to pass, a body request that we will need to pass with some example values of what that might look like all in JSON format. And we can switch over to the schema to figure out which type we need this value to be. For example, username should be a string and login mode should be an integer. Additionally, we'll see some responses such as a 204 response code and a response header. Let's go ahead and try this out by going to the top and clicking the try it out button. Again, because this endpoint does not take any parameters, we don't need to supply any. Under the request body, we'll see some information here for the user information that we wish to authenticate with. For this test, we don't really need anything other than the username, password, and login mode. So we'll go ahead and remove those. In my case, my login mode is set to one, meaning standard. This is the authentication mode that I have configured in the MicroStrategy Library admin page. If you are using something else, you'll need to supply that here. It should be noted that the API docs page only supports standard anonymous and LDAP. If you're using trusted or SAML, this won't work on this page as it requires additional headers that have just not been configured for this. The REST API still does support those authentication modes. They just require a little additional setup. With the standard authentication, we're just going to go ahead and supply a username and a password. And then go ahead and execute. We can see here that we receive a sample curl if we wish to execute this through curl, along with the request URL that was made. As you can see, this is our normal MicroStrategy library URL with API auth login. We get a 204 response code back, meaning success, and a set of response headers. The important header here is the XMSTR auth token, which represents a valid session in MicroStrategy. When you submit the auth login, you'll receive two key components back, an XMSTR auth token and a J session ID. The J session ID is tied with the auth token to ensure the session is valid. If either of these two headers are missing, then your session will drop. Browsers automatically handle the J session ID, so we don't need to manage it here on the docs page. However, if you're going to be using this in a standalone client, you need to make sure you're handling this yourself. With this auth token, we can now make any subsequent request with our session. Now that we have a session, I'd like to try a workflow in which we receive data back from a prompted report. To do so, we'll go ahead and copy our auth token and navigate down to the reports family. There's a few key steps that we need to take in order to get data back from a prompted report. First, we need to create an instance of that report. Then we're going to need to get information on that prompt. Then we need to answer the prompt. And finally, we'll get data back from the report. To start, we'll open the post report instances to create our report instance and try this out. This takes an auth token as a header, a project ID as a header, a report ID in the path of the URL, and a few optional parameters such as an offset, a limit, and a fields. We don't need these for this test, so we'll go ahead and ignore them. 
In this case, I'll just copy over the project ID and report ID for the report I want to use. Once these parameters have been supplied, we'll go ahead and scroll down to the request body. In our case, we don't need to filter any data, so we're just going to remove the whole body. Once we hit execute, we'll receive a 200 response back with two key pieces of information. The first is the instance ID of this report instance, and the second is a status code. A status code of two represents that this report is a waiting prompt answer and can't return data back until we resolve the prompt. Let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go ahead and copy the instance ID and go up and get some information on the prompt that needs to be answered. We'll go ahead and use this report instance prompt endpoint and try it out. We need to supply all the same parameters we did as again, but this time also including an instance ID. I'll go ahead and supply those now. Once all the parameters have been supplied, we can go ahead and execute it. In here, we receive a 200 response, meaning success, and a body response with some information on this prompt. Here, we'll get the name, the ID, the key, the type of prompt it is, and some other important information. With this, we'll go ahead and answer the prompt by going to the put report instance prompt answers endpoint. Like before, we'll go ahead and try it out and supply all the same parameters. Once the parameters have been provided, we'll need to go to the request body and provide some details on the prompt that we're passing. So this is the same information from the previous call. So we'll go ahead and copy some of that over. The ID, key, name, and type are the most important. So we'll go ahead and copy those. We don't need titles, so I'll go ahead and remove it. And then we need to provide some prompt answers. This is done using the answers key with an array of prompts to be answered, similar to the following, where I'll be answering the prompt using the attribute element books and the attribute element electronics. Let's go ahead and execute this to answer the prompts. Here we can see a 200 response back with some headers that we don't actually need. All we need to know is that this was successful and our prompt has been resolved. Now we can go down and get the report data. We'll go ahead and use the get report instance endpoint, which gets the results of this instance. We'll go ahead and try it out and supply all the required parameters. Once all the parameters have been provided, we can go down and execute this. As you can see, now we receive a 200 response, meaning success. And in the body of the request, we can see all the information on this report. As you saw, this page can be used to test the REST API endpoints from within your own environment and using your own data. This can be used to identify the proper parameters and request information to provide in your own development workflow. In the next demos, we'll go through applying this in a more programmatic way.